Hi, everybody. This is Mr. Norris. I'm here demonstrating the weathering lab that you'll be doing here on week two during the 2021 semester. Now, the first thing I want to kind of explain before we really get into what this lab is, is surface area. It's one of those harder terms that not a lot of people understand. And I just want to kind of clarify it real quick before we continue so you can kind of understand the terms that I'll be using. So I'm going to use two dice and we're going to pretend that this is one whole object. So not two objects, but one whole object. And if we look, there are six sides that air can hit this one whole object. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So that's six sides that air can hit on this object. Now, if I were to break this a little bit, so let's say still is connected on the little corners here, but it's broken. I still have the original six sides, but now I'm adding two more sides that air can hit on. So when you're breaking down an object into smaller and smaller pieces, what you're actually doing is increasing the surface area in which a liquid or a gas can connect to that object. So when we say increasing surface area, what happens is when we crush something or break something down mechanically, we increase the surface area so there could be more chemical reactions. Now, when we talked about weathering in class, we talked about two major kinds. We talked about physical weathering and we talked about chemical weathering. And this lab is going to hit on both. So for part A, we are going to be working with water and Alka-Seltzer tablets. And this part you can do at home, just make sure you do not drink the Alka-Seltzer water. And Alka-Seltzer you could buy at the store. They kind of look like these little blue packets called Alka-Seltzer. Ask your parents about them if you wish. So here in front of me, I have two beakers. They're both filled up to 200 milliliters of water. And if you want to do this at home, you could do it with no beakers, just regular cups, as long as they have the same amount of water in them and at the same temperature. These have been sitting for a while, so they're both at about room temperature. Here I pre-crushed my Alka-Seltzer tablets. So this is going to be our crushed tablet. And I have a whole tablet here with me as well. And what we're going to do for this first part is we're going to drop these in at the exact same time in the exact same amount of water at the exact same temperature. And we're going to see which one dissolves first. So if you want to think a little bit in advance and think about which one you think is going to simply dissolve the fastest. And when I put these in the water, they're going to have a reaction. This is going to be a chemical reaction to the water. So if it is a chemical reaction, this is going to be chemical weathering as they dissolve. However, I physically weathered this tablet into smaller pieces so it has a higher surface area. So our crushed tablet has a higher surface area compared to our large whole tablet, which will have a smaller surface area, and we're going to have them chemically weather in water. So on the count of three, we'll get started. One, two, three. Now, you can see that these are reacting by the bubbling that you see in the water. They are dissolving. Um, it might be hard with the video, but if you can't see it, there's the whole tablet. It's bubbling all around, but if you think about it, it only has three sides. It has that cylindrical side and then the two flat parts that the water can touch. Where the crust tablet has all these little bits and nooks and crannies that can get in and start dissolving in all those different forms. So as you can see, this one's already done dissolving. This is our crushed tablet. So this took no time at all. Where this one, we still have a whole tablet still on the side here, still dissolving. Don't know if you could see this, but still here on the side. Oh, now it's at the top. Still dissolving in water. And now finally, it is fully dissolved. So we found that our crushed tablet dissolved faster. And you're going to see in your worksheet that I had run this test six times of previous classes and recorded their data and taken the average. So you can see that overall, on average, the crush tablet dissolved much more quickly than the whole tablet. Now, the next part of this experiment is actually looking at food. Now, I have two Hershey Kisses, and then, sorry, but if you were in my class, we would have Hershey Kisses in class too. Um, and if this part is fine to do at home if you want. You're going to take one of these, and you're going to take a timer, and you're going to start chewing this up and see how quickly you can eat it when you chew it. And start the timer when you start and the timer when you end. 
The other one, you're going to have it sit in your mouth until it's completely melted and you're able to just swallow it. Please don't swallow this whole, just wait until it's completely melted and then swallow it and then stop that timer. You'll find from the two recordings I've done earlier, um, you'll find that the chewed tablet is going to be quicker at being dissolved and eaten than the one that is whole. And if you want to try this at home, the record right now is 15 minutes of waiting for it to melt in your mouth. Now, I'm going to step back for just a second because I have some water on a hot plate in the back here. And we're going to do the exact same Alka-Seltzer test, but now we're going to do it with hot and cold water. So I'm going to go dump these out, refill one of my beakers with water. And this is going to be room temperature water that I have sitting right here in front of me. And then I have a beaker on the hot plate that is uh, getting to the point where it's almost boiling. So that will be hot water versus cold water. And we're going to see if temperature has an effect on weathering as well. So please give me just one second. So it may be hard to see, but this is my hot water. Um, you should see some bubbles in there as well to show you that it is starting to boil or was about to start boiling. And remember, if you're doing this at home, this part is very, very hot. You can microwave the water, but please note, it is hot water. Please do not stick your hand and hurt yourself. Now, unlike the dissolved and crushed tablet, I'm gonna use two whole tablets to keep everything the same. And let me pull my screen down here. So we have our cold water, which is right here. And we have our hot water. Now, the one thing you're gonna realize here is the cold water may look like it has some stuff in there. I rinsed out the beaker as best as I could real quick, but we're going to use whole tablets in cold and hot, and we'll see which one dissolves the fastest now. And I don't know if you can see this, but there is smoke and steam coming out of this one. This tablet is having an intense reaction. You can almost maybe not see the water because of how fizzy it's gotten. Where this tablet is dissolving at the same rate as it did in the previous demonstration, it's still a little bit slower. This one's already completely done. In fact, that was a lot faster than even our crush tablet in the original experiment. And I bet you if we crushed it, it'd be even faster still. And this tablet is still almost the exact same size, still whole and still dissolving. It's taking quite a bit of time. Um, and again, we found that our hotter temperatures reacted a lot faster, a lot more violently than our colder ones. So to help you kind of answer some of these questions, you need to realize that yes, there is a relationship between the surface area and how long it takes to dissolve. The higher the surface area, the less time it takes to dissolve. And same with temperature. We found that the hotter the temperature, the less time it takes for it to dissolve. So we can kind of go from there and say, okay, well, if it's crushed and it's hotter temperature, it will definitely go a lot faster than colder temperature in a whole tablet. So I hope you enjoyed this demonstration. Um, I hope it went by quick enough for you and you're able to answer your questions. If you do have any questions about how things are worded, or if you need to ask for help, please email your teacher to help answer any questions that you may have. Have a great day.